Hey guys, Rika here. So today I thought we would do some tips and tricks, just some little quirks in the building system to kind of help you out with things. Um, we're at Tyler County Dirt Track because I don't want to tear my camp down. So I've just got a handful of things. Some of them are real simple, but kind of essential, I would say. And then some of them are a little bit more in depth. So hang out with me a bit and we'll get through it. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Okie doke. So we're gonna start right here with one that I think is pretty useful, but really simple. You just blueprint two pieces of corn, just like that, you know, wherever they place next to each other. And when you do that, obviously you can place it down, but then you can remove one and you can place them real snug. And that way you can get your crops in a real small area. And this works good if you're putting them on like, um, what's it called? The uh, tiles, the, the farm tiles. This is real useful for that. So, so I think that one is, uh, and you can do this with anything. Um, like I have melon as well, but you just want to put them with corn. See? Because corn is just, I don't know. Well, I don't know what it is about corn, but it's super easy to place down just about everywhere. Um, and then you can get all of your vegetables and your mutt fruit and whatever. I think I have potatoes. Yeah, like you can put them all super close together like this. And then you have a nice, neat little farm. Moving on. Okay, for the next thing, which I think is a very important little tool building is merging. So the way that this works is you find a spot on the ground and we'll look for one in a second that you can sink objects into and they pop back up. And when they pop back up, everything that's on top will sink lower and lower and lower until it's, you know, wherever you are trying to get it. For instance, shelves. Uh, I like to use these cabinets under this table to make a nice sink. Uh, this is a classic merging crafting stations together and they do both work. So that's nice. And then this is a putting a chair in a toilet, you know, so you can, you can finally sit on your toilet. Yeah. You know, don't know why you couldn't to begin with. And then this is one of my favorites, uh, just sinking the cooking station into this fire pit. So these are just some examples. So let's, let's make something. Let's just, uh, we'll just stack a shelf with some things. So what did I have on that? I had, a uh, one of these. So you just put it on there wherever you want it to sit on the bottom. Okay, and then you take the shelf and these deposits are great. Usually they have real nice, see how low that gets, sink spots on the edges. Um, another good place to look for a sink spot is at the edge of the road, sometimes near some rocks or debris um, and see how it, it drops. Uh, this is probably not going to be super, super amazing because I'm trying to just do it quick, but yeah, yeah, see that dropped all the way down. Didn't want it to drop that far, but basically you drop it till it's on the middle shelf and then you'll put what you want on the next shelf. So these suitcases, and then you'll drop it until they're on the middle shelf. And then you have a fully stacked shelf just like that. It's real simple. And that's how I did it with all of these. You just put them on top, sink them in. Uh, sometimes you gotta start over and to start over, you just grab what's on the bottom and place it on top and it starts back at square one. It's very simple, but it, there's so many things you can do. There's so many like fancy objects you can create doing that and all sorts of things. So I think this is the most handy tip and I've had a lot of people ask me about it. So 
Another real little one right here is if you want to float these perimeter wall railings, you just simply snap them on and delete the, uh, I don't know why you'd want to, but apparently that's the thing people want to do. And you just delete the uh, foundation. It's real simple. Nothing too fancy about it. You just put them on, delete the foundation, and they stay there. So that's how you do that. Okay, moving on to these uh, perimeter walls here. Normally, you can't place them like this. You have to place uh, this first, but then if you place it and you place one attached to it, it doesn't let you remove that, right? So how did these get here? Well, all you really have to do is place a third, delete the middle, and then you can delete this. And then you can place many of those attached as you want. You can move them around, you can delete them. It's a pretty handy, I think they make a nice entryway um, to like a fortified base and you know, just whatever you want to use them for. But that's a handy little trick. Next one is floating these counters. Um, it's really simple, but I think a lot of people kind of overthink it because <laughs> they probably think it won't float, but they will absolutely float. In fact, okay, that looked that took too long. Here they are. So this goes for the Old West ones, the Slocum Joes, and the Red Rocket. Um, they all have the same physics for the most part. I just use these ones because they're new and I like them. Basically, all you got to do is plop one down, plop two down, however tall you want it to be. You know, if you want them to be all the way up here, just you can put them on a locker or something. You, you know, you can put them on whatever you want. I just think it's easy to stack them on each other. And then you simply just snap them in. And then they snap in and um, you can actually corner in and turn the corner you know they're pretty versatile I see people use these sometimes for outside of diners gas stations you know that sort of stuff but yeah they're they're really easy to to kind of do whatever you want because they snap in together moving on we have the floating stairs Ooh. So this is one that I got asked about because I had a CD shed with the stairs in front of it. Obviously the stairs don't snap to it, but this is real simple. You just put a foundation down, grab your stairs, whichever ones you like, and then you do, let me get up here, eh, snap. You just snap two more. Delete the middle. Oops, did that. I did that the wrong way. You delete this one, then the middle, then that one, and then they just stay there. And then you can, uh, you can take stuff like one of the structures and butt it up against there as best you can. It's a little fiddly, but you know you can do it like so. That's probably not perfect, but you get the idea. And then you have nice steps that go into it. It's not super hard to do, but wish steps would just snap to those, but whatever. Next up, we have these bad boys. So traditionally, you can't really stack these on top of each other to make a, a staircase. I don't know why, Bethesda. So what we do to get around this is just build these poles up, delete the bottom, and then kind of got to get it the right angle, but it will snap into that. Did I got the wrong staircase? I might. But it will snap to that pole. You know, you just got to kind of be patient. I think, I think this is a staircase I was using. 
maybe. No, no, it was that one. I just can't. There we go. Wait, I had it. I had it. Oh, I had it. There we go. See, and then you can snap these. And I, of course, did it the wrong way. But you can snap them, and then you can go all the way up. Uh, I think I did that with my Firewatch Tower, and people were confused because they couldn't stack them. But this, that's how you do it. And then if you want to go up another level, you just remove the pole, and then you just keep building the pole up, and they snap to the bottom of the poles. So it's a real simple thing, but, you know, they should just be able to snap them together. I don't know why you can't. Okay, up next are two of my very favorite little tricks. So this is the post thing that you've probably seen people do where you just put the posts wherever you want. Basically, you put a post like you normally would on a, on a foundation and then you blueprint these two together. Just these two, not the foundation, just those two posts. And then what you're left with is this this blueprint. And the nice thing about this blueprint is that it will place absolutely anywhere. I mean, within reason, it won't like, it won't clip into things like that, but sometimes it will actually. <laughs> Shouldn't say that. Sometimes it will. But yeah, it's just, you can put it wherever you like. It's pretty cool. It's a very handy thing to have. Um, I can't tell you how much I use this. Like I probably use this in every single camp. So that's how that works. And this, believe it or not, there is a fusion generator right here. You don't hear it. You don't see it. It's glorious. So the way that this works is, here, I'll prove it to you. You should repair the spike board. Oh, look, there's a generator there. So the way that this works is you take one of these spike traps, you get another one. Sometimes they don't replace properly and you just put it wherever you want your generator to sit. You take your generator, put it on top. I will warn you that you should attach it to a power pylon before you snap the trap. And then as you can see, this light is on. And then you snap the trap. Generator disappears. No more noise. Power is still on. It's so handy because those fusion generators are so loud and they attract so much nonsense. As you can see, the scorch stopped shooting at me once I snapped the trap. He's still up there though. I'm going to go take care of him. I'll be right back. Okay, we're going to skip around to this side for now, and this is something that I've been doing for a really long time, and I didn't realize people didn't know how to do it. So, putting the chimneys out of your roof, now this has to be the low roof, obviously because for whatever reason these chimneys aren't tall enough to, to hit the regular, you know, roof height. Don't know why. <laughs> Bethesda, come on. But... I mean, obviously they don't look great with glass roofs. That was just so that you could see what, you know, what was happening. I would probably have just a regular roof here. And then, you know, they make sense. They stick out like they should. It just works. And really all you have to do to achieve this is... Take, you know, set your walls up the way you want them. Take your roof off. Put the fire pit. Oh, good. I failed leader of the pack again. Put the fire pit where you're the fireplace where you want it. Go get your roof. And it will just snap in. Like, it's nothing fancy. It just snaps right in. Um, and it'll stick out the top. Sometimes it'll be a little finicky if you use the uh, the corner ones like this, but you can get them to work. They're just a little trickier, but yeah. 
And if you're having a lot of trouble, just flamethrower the roof and stick it in there. Which we'll talk about in a minute. Alright. Speaking of flamethrowers, this beauty. Probably one of the most essential things to uh, camp building, in my opinion. Because you can do a lot of stuff with this flamethrower. For instance, if you break this wall, you can put things inside of it. This is actually the back of the uh, the milk machine. Uh, it looks interesting. <laughs> but you can put whatever you want in the wall and then you repair it and it's in the wall. You know, if you wanted to do that with like um, with a fridge so that your fridge was recessed into the wall, you could. You could do it. It's, it's very useful, I think. Um, and here's one of the other things you can do with it. If you put a symptomatic in there, fix the wall, and then make the wall a door, then you've actually got like a secret door if you build it. Obviously not with a glass, glass wall, but you know, from here you can get to the other side. So you could, in theory, use it as a doorway. Um, you just have to have a dedicated in and a dedicated out. But it's a cool idea. Um, you could also put the collect drawn station in the middle here when these walls are broken so that the terminals on the inside and the collect drawns on the outside. That's something that people do. It's nice. You get your little terminal. But basically, you just take this bad boy, put him here, break the wall, and then you can put stuff right in here. Um, now this wall isn't the most user friendly with this, but it does work still. Um, like, uh, you can't put fridges in the workshop, but like you could put a jukebox in the wall and then you just repair it and now you got a jukebox in the wall, you know? I mean, obviously you'd have to cover up the shenanigans back here, but it's really handy. I probably use this more than I care to admit, especially putting the pipes of the stoves out of the wall. It's just, it's a very useful little thing, little tidbit. Up next here, we have floating roofs. These can be, these used to be more useful when you could hang walls off of them, but they still have their uses, especially as floors. I've seen a lot of people use these as floors um, they are totally floating. There's nothing like broken under them. So how you accomplish this is actually more simple than I thought it was going to be. You just, you put your thing there, thing there, and then you put a flat roof, turn it into a carved roof and then you can take these away and then you can turn this back into a flat roof and there you go and then you can turn it into you know whatever kind of roof you're going for here glass ones are cool but yeah and then you have a floating roof and you can do with that whatever your heart desires And last, but certainly not least, we have the circular buildings. Now, these look fantastic with glass, by the way. Um, not all the floor textures are gonna look great in here, just because they're overlapping, as you can see. But the carpets do look really good. Um, these are kind of, I mean, you can build these however you want. Um, you can make them gigantic. You can make them real small. You can make them just half of a circle, whatever. Um, 
but the way to get the foundations and the roofs to clip in like that is blueprinting. So basically, this is what it looked like when I blueprinted it. Okay. So when you blueprint, you want to put the foundations on the outside of the wall and the roofs that you want to use facing the opposite way, facing the outside. And then when you blueprint it, it's going to look like this, but when you plop it down automatically, it's going to put everything on the inside. So this is that structure just, you know, without the pretty glass walls. So basically you put, let me put one over here and I'll show you. Is there a little more space over here? So basically take all these off. And then you want to take floors, whatever floors you want, snap them all the way around the outside. Oh, Graham came to say hi. What a nice day for me. I'll be right back. Okay, back to building. Um, so what was I doing here? Okay, so you want to put those around the outside and then you can take these ones off the inside. Well, most of them. Hang on, there's one in the middle that has to stay in the middle or else there would be a gap in the floor. So this one, you just put it anywhere that it fits in the middle here. Like it's, it really doesn't matter as long as it's the right height um, and then for the roof you're basically gonna take a flat one and then an angled one you can if it wants to play Oh, wait, that's right. It's an angled one and an angled one. Yep. And then you do that all the way around until you have it like it was in the blueprint and you blueprint this structure and when you place it down, it's going to look like this. And then you can replace the walls with whatever walls you want in here. And same with the roof. You can replace the roof with, you know, the asbestos roof or the glass roof, whichever you want. Um, totally up to you. It's very customizable. I mean, the glass one even lets you do this, which is <laughs> actually curious how that looks. So, I mean, that that's actually kind of neat, too. There's a lot you can do with these glass roofs, too. They're a little bit more versatile than the regular ones. But, um, yeah, so this is basically, I wouldn't say all the tricks that I use, but these are the ones that are, um, I think, more useful. Um, obviously there's a couple other little things that I like to do, but they're not as, you know, they're a little bit more niche to me, but, uh, you know, like using suitcases as stairs, but I think a lot of people do that and that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, you literally just, you just stack them until you have a staircase. It's, it's really nothing fancy about it. Um. And I think that that's going to do it. I don't think there's anything I missed. If you have any questions or if I didn't explain anything well enough, 
um, go ahead and leave me a comment and I'll see if I can explain it better for you because uh, I know I'm not great at explaining stuff. That's why I wanted a visual for you to, to have here. But that's going to do it for me. Like I said, if you got questions, let me know. Um, if you're on PC, I can even show you some of these or maybe help you with your build. I don't mind at all. Just let me know. Okay. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.